Cinema. Welcome back to Horvath Cinema. I'm your host, Greg, your local metalhead, and with me is... Part of the Collector. What's up, everybody? And you gave me Days of Thunder because for some reason you think I want to watch a Tom Cruise movie. I just wanted to tell you that this movie, when I saw this at, uh, I was probably eight or nine years old, and I, I had this movie on VHS. Mm-hmm. My dad showed it to me, and I fell in love with NASCAR for like a good solid three years after this movie. Really? Because like... I don't know, man. Robert Duvall was great in this movie. It's got a good cast, man. Nicole Kidman, Robert Duvall, Tom Cruise, obviously, and uh, so, Randy uh, Quaid's in it. Gotta love that. It's a trap of a movie. Michael Rooker. There's a lot more to it. Uh, Tony Scott was the director. Yeah, man. One of my favorite directors. It's a good movie, bro. Hans Zimmer did the music. Really? I, did not, the, I didn't know Hans. I didn't did know it. that until after I watched it and I was doing research. I was like, fucking Hans Zimmer. I was like, this is like a trap of a movie. It's all my favorite things brought together. Anyway, it didn't make you love NASCAR. It didn't make you go out and like buy a fucking NASCAR shirt. The I bad day. have a fun fact because like you, well, I didn't get into NASCAR, but my dad's friends fucking love NASCAR. And you know how, I don't know if your dad did this, but my dad would bring me over to his like friend's house to like hang out and stuff. And he'd just bring the kids with him instead yeah, of getting yeah. a babysitter kind of thing. And this guy, Catfish, I remember this guy. Every time we went over to their house, there was NASCAR and Guns N' Roses. NASCAR would be on mute, but they would just, you know, be watching it and Guns N' Roses as loud as possible. Drinking beer in the garage. Drinking fucking beer. Watching the race, man. Yeah. It's America right That's, there, dude. That was my fucking childhood. It was NASCAR. You're welcome. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, we're trying to make you a man. <laughs> you should be thanking them. Yeah, man. But you no, should be I, pissing whiskey right now. I fucking hate NASCAR. I do not like NASCAR. Dude, I like cars. Left turns, bro. <laughs> right. I just I just don't I don't think I like competition cuz I don't give a fuck. I I was thinking about that during this movie like why don't I like competitive things? Because I love cars. I I I'm always watching like car videos. I want to get a project car and, you know, tinker with it and stuff like that. But it's just something about racing. It just like bores the fuck out of me. I don't care. You just wouldn't consider yourself a competitive person? Yeah. Not at all, because even with my uh, the wife, when we play games, I'm just like, hey, you win. Good job. Oh, just, fuck that shit. Yeah, and you and your wife are, like, super competitive. I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm competitive about fucking everything. Yeah, I know this. Like, I don't, <laughs> I, it doesn't matter what the fuck it is. I want to yeah. be the best at it. Right. Or just better than who I'm playing with. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, I just don't have that bone. So I just, so it was hard for me to get into this movie i watched it twice actually did you yeah i was in i got a nice little setup if you see um i brought the playstation here so i can actually watch movies in here properly oh i just sit in your fucking podcasting chair and i got a glass of whiskey and i started the movie and i just got fucked up while i watched it so Hell i was like yeah. i probably need to watch this again to make sure i get a, a a good scope of this movie so i watched it again this morning I think what I liked about it so much when I first saw it was the fact that like how little I did know about NASCAR mm -hmm. and I thought they did a good job of like mixing in humor with the racing and stuff like that. Right. And, like I, I get it. Like now looking back, like when I watched it this last time for this, yeah. like I just realized that I like, I don't like Tom Cruise like at all anymore. <laughs> Can you know I just say I mean? thank you for watching these movies before we do it now? Like, I think it's like a new thing you've been doing, and I really appreciate it. I mean, uh, since we've come back from the hiatus, I've, yeah, been, yeah, yeah. I've been going in and doing it. But well, I, uh, I appreciate it. Used to be, you know, I could go off the memory, you yeah. know what I'm saying? But then I realized that... Uh, you were just missing little bits and pieces here and there. Well, not only that, but uh, just the, this shit ain't what it once was. My memory ain't what it was. Yeah, that's true. And it's hard to remember so many movies, too. It's true. You know, I think I've had to push some out over the years to make room for no, new shit. Yeah, so. like my movies that I give you that take up space. Yeah, I know. So many of my movies take some up space. Some of them I wish brain. I could, like, fucking delete, you know, like a personal <laughs> computer. But, yeah, this one didn't make me fall in love with Tom Cruise. I love yeah. every, like, a I love all the actors in this movie. Um, I, I wrote a note. I'm like, how funny is it that John C. Riley's in this and Talladega Nights? Oh yeah, I know it's great, but he plays literally like the crew guy. Yeah, 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 he's a nobody. Yeah. But I'm curious if he took that information that he learned on set and then brought it to Talladega Nights. I bet Will Ferrell made fun of him in that shit every oh, day, sure. like when they did this. Like, this is make you feel like you're back on Days of Thunder, bro. <laughs> it, has Tom called to ask for a cameo in this? Right, right. Just cheesing him the whole fucking dude. Way. How fucking dope would that have been, though? 
in Talladega Nights to have a fucking Cole Trickle right. cameo, bro. That would have been amazing. That would have been hardcore. I wouldn't have gotten it until now, and then I'd be like, that was fucking brilliant. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, all, the whole time I was watching this, I feel like Talladega Nights was loosely based on this movie. It's like the... Loosely, like not... I know. mean... Yeah, I guess you could say Talladega Nights is like the uh, the parody of it. You know what I mean? Right. But That's what I was thinking the whole time. Like, this is like a parody of that. But anyway. But the cool thing about this one is, is Cole is uh, Tom Cruise's character, Cole, he's not a NASCAR driver. Right. He's like this crazy ass driver. And like Randy Quaid's like, look, man, the dude can drive anything on wheels. And like, he's cheap as shit. So we're going to you go with him. Like, right. Robert Duvall is like the legendary. He's like the Vince Lombardi of NASCAR, right? Uh, yeah. Race team coaches. Yeah, like he's won all these fucking NASCAR championships, but he's retired. He's like he can't do it no more. He's like I don't want to do this shit anymore. Well, you know why? Yeah, because like the, his son's the he died or whatever, didn't he? John C. Riley's dad was right. his um, right, right, right. his underling, I guess you could say. That's right. His driver, mm-hmm. and then um, a crash happened, and his dad died. So that's when he retired. That's right, because that's like the opening of the movie. Right. Because so that's got, why they have to get Tom Cruise. Exactly. So they got, um, so yeah. Can I just say that Nicole Kidman is fucking smoking hot in this, this movie? This is, yeah. So this is like her top five bonable movies. I was like, going to say, this is a list, Nicole Kidman. Yeah, this is up there with like uh, Moulin Rouge shit. Like yeah, she, she looks good. What happened to her? I haven't, yeah. She's you know, rich as fuck, bro. She doesn't have to do anything anymore. I was thinking about the other day because we watch a bunch of old movies. This came out what nineteen ninety, nineteen ninety one. It was around there, ninety one. I want to say ninety one. Yeah. Um, all these actors that we grew up with. I was talking to my wife. I'm like, what happened to them all? She's like, they're all old and rich. They don't want to do this shit anymore. I was like, oh yeah, that makes sense. Well, not only just that, but uh, you know, she kind of got the curse of the Tom Cruise man. Any woman that's been married to Tom Cruise and isn't with him anymore, their careers are fucking gone. They're non-existent. Right. You want to check me on this fucking Katie Holmes? Gone. Yeah. She's not in anything anymore. Batman Begins was the last thing you saw her. Mm -hmm. Penelope Cruz. Career's fucking... I mean, she's in shit, but, like, nothing good. (laughs) You contribute that to com- Tom Cruise, like, oh, you're not with Tom yeah, Cruise like even anymore, the so movies they were in together. She was terrible. Like those movies were terrible. <laughs> um, they actually Tom Cruise actually recommended her for this movie, and then I think they got married shortly after. Yeah, because uh, they did this and uh, the other one they did together, uh, Eyes Wide Shut. I think. Oh, okay. Because they get Cooper. they get butt naked together in that one. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Have you ever seen that? Yeah. Wow. It's like fucking forever ago. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm trying probably. to get a feel for movies you have and haven't seen. That's why I asked you about Vanilla Sky, which we'll get to. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I saw the post. I was like, fuck me. <laughs> I told my wife, I was like, out of all the fucking Tom Cruise movies that he could make me watch, I was like, just take a shot in the dark or which one she did. She's like, that stupid ass vampire one. I was like, that's a pretty strong choice, but no, the fucking Vanilla Sky. She's like, ooh. Yeah. <laughs> she's like, isn't that the one? I was like, yeah, yeah, that's that one. She's like, oh, okay. I got a fun little game we're going to do with it, but I'll talk about it later when we talk about it. All right. Yeah. Um, What else was I going to say? I was gonna you say were just before. rattling off. Oh, about how hot Nicole Kidman is. Yeah. Well, not only that, but how like Tom Cruise ruins careers. Oh, yeah. And uh, <laughs> yeah, Nicole Kidman. Like she, I mean, she's been in stuff, but like yeah. nothing that you're just like, wow, she carried that fucking movie. Or right. like she was the best part of that movie. So let's talk about this movie a little bit. So the whole, we kind of got on the story like, the car salesman wants to start a whole NASCAR group Sorry. trying to get sponsors and shit. So he's went to him to make a car because he can he makes cars, too. Apparently, he's I not love just that a- scene where Robert Duvall is in his garage with just the frame. I really wish that would have been like extended, like there was more to it. And I wish Tom Cruise would have came in on it and he like shows him about the car because I have it in my notes. Like there's no way this driver doesn't know anything about cars. Like that's a little bit far fetched for me. I think he was just a wild child. You know what I'm saying? Well, like, that's what he was saying. They're like, they put me in a car and I could drive. That's about it. But me, like I know people that, um, that get obsessed with things. They want to know all the inner workings of it too. Right. Like, when I started getting into guitar, I wanted to like take apart guitars like this one on my wall right here. I, I put pickups in myself like 
people that are obsessed with things want to know all the details of it. So him to be obsessed with racing, you would think he wouldn't want to know all the details of the car, like what makes it do certain things. Not necessarily, because, I mean, that's like kind of like how Paul Walker's character in Fast and the Furious. Yeah. Like, he didn't give a fuck if he blew the car up as long as he won. Right, you know and the I mean? same thing in here. He talks about the tires. Like, you keep melting the tires. He's like, so? He's like, you won't win if you keep melting the tires. <laughs> he goes, we're going to do 20 laps your way, 20 laps my way, or five laps, whatever 50. it was. 50 laps, right? Yeah. Because NASCAR races are ridiculously fucking long. Yeah, they are. And he's like, I bet you I'll beat you in time with my the way I drive, or the way I'm telling you to drive, rather. So, And obviously, he sheds six seconds off. Yep. And, it, like, it's a good little thing. It's a good relationship between Robert Duvall's character, Harry, and uh, um, Tom Cruise, which is Cole. Like, because they hate, fucking hate each other. And then yeah. Robert Duvall kind of, like, you know, starts to like him a little bit. And, uh... <sighs> On top of, like, not giving a shit about uh, NASCAR, this is one of those movies that I know a movie needs, like, a uh, a base, something to, like, drive it along. The first one that comes to to mind is Whiplash. It's about a kid that goes to play jazz drum in a jazz band or whatever. But that's just, like, the basis of the movie. Everything else, the character development, like, surrounds that movie. But this one, I feel, is the other way around. Like, you just have characters to just drive this story of a NASCAR driver. And I'm just like, I don't care. And it, I feel like it doesn't build on the characters enough. Like, I don't know enough about the characters. I don't know. I, I like I like it. I think it's... I think that's the reason why it's good, is the characters make the movie in this one. I mean, they do have their, like, banter back and forth. But I don't get, I don't get to know these people. Like, that's, people tell me what they were. Like, oh, you used to be a NASCAR... What are they called? Pit coach? Like, I don't know what the fuck the name... Chief. Crew chief. Yeah. Crew chief. You were a fucking crew chief. Uh, Tom Cruise, you're a driver, and now you're going to drive for a NASCAR. Ooh, tell me more about this guy. Tell me, like, I want to know more. I don't know. Yeah. Like, what got him into driving? What got, like... Stuff well, that's like what that. I think makes the movie good is the fact that, like, even if you're not a fan of NASCAR, like, I think the movie's good enough on its own that this is one still enjoy it without loving NASCAR. This is 100 percent made for NASCAR fans, right? Like, this is a NASCAR movie. Like, if you're like, well, this was like the fucking NASCAR movie. It still is to this day. I was watching a podcast with Dale Earnhardt Jr. and he fucking loves this movie. <laughs> Sometimes I call Tom over and we race, man. Yeah, right. And I tell him to to, to lap me. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Overall, I was going to say, I know why you like this movie. We talked about it on the last uh, podcast. You were talking about how you like ensemble cast, getting the crew together and everything. That's why you like this shit. You're yeah. getting all these people together to like get to this goal. And what I'm it? like, this is why he likes it. Cause I like the dynamic. I love Michael Rooker as the... As the uh, I did too. He, the vert, he did you know, the, yeah. the, the antagonist driver. You know, the guy yeah. that's like, you don't belong here. Right. You know what I mean? And He's rubbing him the whole time. Yeah, Rubin's racing, baby. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Dude, and like, you just learn so much. Like, I don't know. Like I said, um, I know I was younger, so I was probably more impressionable. But even watching it the last time, man, I still enjoyed it because it was just like, like I said, I'm not a huge NASCAR fan to this day. I keep up with it only because I watch Sports Center and I know what's going on in all sports. But I don't know. I just think it's a good movie for that time period. Like, yeah, it brings yeah. me back to, to a good place. A lot of Confederate flags. <laughs> Yeah, there was yeah. one shot of a close up of a Confederate flag. I'm like, you can tell this was made back in the day. Oh, <laughs> Shit yeah. wouldn't fly today, pun intended. But there are some scenes that I just love, man. Like when they get pulled over and they're fucking with them. Yeah. And they have that hot ass lady, <laughs> you know, frisk him down and shit. Right. That shit was hilarious. You know, they really went all out because they had actual like people dressed up as cops with her. It wasn't just her. So I'm like, damn, that's really elaborate. Mm. Um, so I'm probably going to make a lot of people mad because this is one of those nostalgia feel movies that people just grew up watching and love and whatever i don't personally care for this movie but i do recognize it as like um why people would like it i just don't give a shit about nascar I don't i'm gonna give a keep shit giving about... you fucking sports movies Please until, fucking you, don't. until you find i one. saw fucking celtic pride in your hands and i'm like god damn it oh that is a very good movie i don't give a shit about basketball you know this that's what i, I said. love that that's movie why, that's what i thought like i mean i know it's not a com like a straight up comedy but right. i figured you would get the same enjoyment out of it i did i it. actually really really love that movie and that's a good example of they did good character building a good like comedy they didn't make it just about basketball basketball was just the driver of the movie and then they piled characters on well, top of it 
I just feel like comedy is easier, right? Oh yeah. You well, know I, mean? I would if say. you're good at it. Yeah, you know yeah, yeah. If you're good at it, it's easy. And when you got Dan Aykroyd and Daniel Stern, like that's not, and Damon, Damon Wayans, Wayans, like yeah. that's not a hard fucking push to make that good. Uh, especially when they made that movie, like right. they were all in their prime as far oh. as like. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Dan Aykroyd. They were all pretty much in their. But they were they were good. They were heavy. All on their A game at that exactly. point. Yeah. Um. Fun fact: Tom Cruise actually wrote this movie. Who does? Him and the writer of uh, Chinatown, which the name is slipping me right now, but they got together and wrote this, which is really crazy. Hmm. You ever seen Chinatown? I have. It's a good movie. I have the uh, with the uh, Nicholson. Yep. Yeah. It's been a while, but yeah. Yeah. Um. So yeah. But yeah, I bought you Celtic Pride because it was a quarter, bro. <laughs> so like, I'm glad because I wouldn't have bought it. And you asked me about this dumb shit, so I got it for a quarter too. Oh fuck yeah! yeah. So the other day, is that my surprise? Yeah, that was your surprise. Nice. Yeah, the other day, um, me and the wife were watching it on uh, on um, HBO, mm. and she was really into it, and I was, like, doing stuff, and then we had to go take care of some stuff. We came back. She's like, you want to finish that movie? And I'm like, not right now. She's like, I want to finish it. I was into it. <laughs> the uh, I had another one for you, but I couldn't remember if you owned it or not. I got you Insomnia. Yes, I do own that. Yeah, I, I own you- all of Chris. I even bought the new one that came out, uh, I, I thought you uh I thought you told me you got it because it was a Chris Nolan movie, but I wasn't sure. Yeah. But I got it for a quarter too, so it's oh. not a loss. I'll, I'll keep it. But. <laughs> All these doubles of yours, we should just do giveaways where you just send people fucking I really should, man. Like it would it would be great. The only thing is is I feel bad like I sent him a twenty five cent movie. Like it costs more to ship the fucking thing yeah, than what yeah, the yeah. movie costs. Definitely. So like I just feel like a dumbass doing it at that point. Like if we ever do a live show, I might just take them out there and just like throw them into the fucking crowd, <laughs> like, you know. Like a I mean? band throwing yeah. kicks out in the yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's fucking hilarious. Yeah, but dude, we could sign it. Like make it our own little thing. They'll be like, holy shit, Danny DeVito said No, that's uh, this guy named Part of the Collector. That would be fucking hilarious. Like you know, fucking years down the road. Sign it right over Ben Affleck's face on Jersey Girl. <laughs> If I can toss it out there. Oh, that's hilarious. That's what I was going to do, bro. Like, I was going to do. Um, but yeah, uh, yeah, like I got you insomnia. And then I bought, I got so many good fucking movies this past weekend, though. Like, Did you? I got this, like, it's not a steel book, but it's a special edition Escape from New York. Oh, yeah. And it's got like this big ass thing, and it's got a fucking comic book that comes inside oh, of shit. it. Yeah, some of them do. Yeah, it's Dude, really cool I, when they do that. Yeah, I think it was like the last big one they did before they came out with the steel books and shit. I see. Is it a DVD or Blu-ray? Actually, you know what? It's not even that. Yeah, because it's a DVD. It's not a Blu-ray. I don't yeah. think. I bought. See, man, you done got me on these fucking steel books, bro. I bought two. <laughs> I, I bought fucking two of them. You're bro. welcome. I have uh they're just so cool to me. Like they I really know. are, dude. Like I bought fucking uh I bought Fantastic Beast I told you about and I bought Van Helsing. Nice with you, Jack. <laughs> they have some weird movies on uh on Steelbook. Yeah. I, I was trying that. to think of one. There's two that I want really bad. There's a Scott Pilgrim Steelbook that looks cool as fuck. And uh Tucker and Dale versus Evil that has this this like animated, mm. like cartoony drawing on it and i want it so bad but i just haven't gotten around to getting them i saw a hangover part two steel book out there and i asked the dude how much he wanted for it and he was like three bucks i was like yeah, i already own this on blu-ray like <laughs> yeah it's not worth upgrading Hang-o- that's what i'm talking about that's a weird movie to put on blu-ray or a uh, steel book rather it's weird to be on fucking blu-ray it's a comedy <laughs> like i feel like it's waste of blu-ray if you put a comedy on blue on blu-ray like <laughs> I know we need to get back to the movie, but now you got me on this fucking kick because we've been talking about maybe, movies. Maybe Ted, I could see because you know you got animated characters in it and shit. But like, yeah. I just feel like it's a waste of fucking money putting it on a Blu-ray. I feel like Blu-rays are for a big budget, like action I, shit. I'm actually getting to the point where I'm not buying DVDs anymore. I'm only doing Blu-ray and up. Yeah, because I was gonna order a movie. You bougie ass. Yeah, I'm getting there. <laughs> well, I was gonna order a movie, and I'm just like, I feel wrong. Oh, it's actually a movie I watched, which we'll talk about later. Mm-hmm. I looked it up for the special edition, but only special edition only came on DVD. And I'm just like, nah, I'm good. Right. I'll wait for a Blu-ray yeah. cause they will do it. Eventually. It's a pretty popular. Movie. I got the, uh, the second Jurassic world on Blu-ray. I got straight out of Compton on Blu-ray. Nice. I need to get that one. I like that movie a lot. You know what? I got it for you. I'll bring it to you. You got two of them? I got two of course of them. course you do. You, I'm just going to see in your stack here. I have two of every movie. No, i tell you why I bought it because it was on Blu-ray and uh, the the sleeve had a stain on it, but the DVD itself were 
perfect. And uh, the dude was like, yeah, I only want a buck for it. I was like, well, f- like, why not buy a Blu-ray for a dollar, dude? Right. I bought a shit ton of Blu-rays. Like, I can't remember them all. But- I haven't. I I don't want to get too far off, but we're already here. Have I told you about the 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 sleep the sleeve thing that I found online? So if it's out of print, people are buy, paying absurd amounts of money for sleeves. No movie in it, just a sleeve. Really? I saw one for one hundred and sixty five dollars for a fucking for, sleeve. For what the movie? Sleeve. I don't even remember. It's out of print. Like I was gonna say, because I may have that bitch. <laughs> <laughs> you don't. One hundred and sixty five dollars. Shit, I'll find it. <laughs> I bought Weekend at Bernie's. Nice. Not on Blu-ray, but... I mean, is it even on Blu-ray? Yeah, I actually did find it on Blu-ray. Did you really? You know what's crazy is I can't find Weekend at Bernie's, too, on anything. That's pretty crazy because... Because uh, I like the second one almost more than the first one. The dancing shit kills I've me, I've only bro. seen the first one. Oh, dude, the second one's even better. They put him. They put Bernie's body... It's on, like, some voodoo hut, and they put a curse that every time music plays, his body comes back to life dancing nice. it's fucking hilarious because like he's like laying on the beach and then like some they're like by some like uh sandbar and people start playing and all of a sudden the body just starts <laughs> <laughs> that's a silly ass fucking movie okay yeah. real quick we're gonna get back to the movie in a second I okay, just wanna okay. go up. so special edition jeepers creepers 2 with the slip you actually do get the movie 65 dollars damn yeah that w- the second one sucked well, I mean, I guess it was. Some people have like nostalgia or whatever. They like those, that franchise or whatever. I remember I saw both of them because they were both at Mugs yeah. when I worked there. And I remember thinking that they were both about the same amount of shitty. Yeah. Like not a. You know, I don't like one. them either. I'm not a huge fan. I like, thought they were just going for the, too much. Like, what is it? Is it a Jeepers Creepers one? Is is Jeepers Creepers one, the first half of it, I actually really enjoy. The second half, I don't give a shit. Jeepers Creepers. So fucking. Days, days of, of thunder days of thunder <laughs> <laughs> fucking nascar man um, so yeah so uh you know tom cruise's character cole trickle he's trying to learn the nascar scene right and that's where some of the good scenes come from because he won't listen to robert duvall yeah he's very stubborn and robert duvall is like you know like i said he's like the vince lombardi of nascar coaches mm-hmm. he's like motherfucker if you listen to me you'll win yeah. he's like you're not going to be able to do it how you want to do it because yeah. you don't know anything yeah exactly and uh, I did enjoy that part of the movie where he's like teaching him how to drive in the NASCAR races. I actually enjoyed that montage. One of the best scenes is uh, what he's like. He's like, what? He looks he's like, we're having ice cream. Oh, what? right, right, right. <laughs> he fucking pulls in and tries to, he jumps the barrier and starts chasing him. <laughs> fucking hilarious. Yeah. Um, and they get in trouble for it. Because they lost a sponsor. Yeah, I love that. He's, he's chasing like, him around in the. Yeah, he's trying to chase him and and uh, John C. Riley, and then we're trying to hold him back. It's hilarious. Yeah. Uh, he crashes a couple of the cars and uh, he sets one of them on fire. And he's got a uh, shit all around his face and yeah. stuff. It's pretty funny. Well, uh, Michael Rooker is like the 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 the, uh, the veteran driver. Like he's the winner. Mm-hmm. You know, he's like the Dale Earnhardt at the time period. Right. And uh, he actually said he tried to base his character off of Dale, Dale and Hurt. He needed a mustache. If you're going, <laughs> I'm just saying, being honest, if you're, if you're going for if you're going for Dale, you got to have that mustache. Right. Bro. Yeah. You can't do it without it. But apparently he's a huge NASCAR fan. Like, he, you know, that's huge. the crazy thing about Michael Rucker. Like he's or a Rooker. He's such a good actor. But at the same time, like he just seems like he'd be just like a, a laid back, like normal dude. To hang oh, out he's with. a country dude that you're going to have a beer with. Like when and talk he, about NASCAR. That's what I say. When you, the way he talks, you can tell he's from like Texas or Louisiana, somewhere in the South, you know? And, uh, but he's fantastic. I loved him in the guardians movies. Oh, hundred percent. There I, couldn't be anyone else. I really thought he made those for the most part. Yes. Chris Pratt's great in them too. Actually, the whole cast is great. I was going to say all over the board, but he added to it. Definitely. For real. He, he definitely made Yondu a badass in those right. movies. Um, but I love him, and, 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 you know, he's, like, he's not really a dirty racer, but, like, he'll do anything it takes to win. And he sees, I guess, a little bit of that in uh, Tom Cruise's character. Mm-hmm. So he's just making life fucking difficult on him every way he can. Well, it's kind of like the hazing. He's hazing him because right. he's a new driver, so he's making his life hell. Well, uh, about halfway through the movie, Tom Cruise is starting to get the hang of it a little bit. He's getting better, and uh, they have a race where he um, he ends up taking out Michael Rooker. And they both crash, and they both have to be rushed to the ER and all that, and that's where Nicole Kidman... Um, I don't know if you know this, but this took 
place during the actual Daytona 500. Oh, really? They had actual cars in the race. They just didn't have cards. That's cool. Yeah. So this was, took place. They were like special cars made for the movie that raced with the fucking Daytona 500. You want to hear something even cooler? <laughs> I have two of the NASCARs from this movie. Dude. Tom Cruise's car. I have the pink and white one and the green and yellow one oh, fuck that he races yeah. in at the end. Oh, uh, I think I got them from McDonald's. Oh, or, I see. Or something like. Hey, that shit's worth money. Like, I've had them forever, but um, there's a lot of people that love this movie. I bet that shit's worth money. But they're both the 46, and they say cold trickle on the side. That's fucking awesome. That's actually really cool. cool. Um, yeah, the, the whole McDonald's thing. I used to have a lot of the toys because my mom would buy us. You know, Happy Meals all the time, like you do. I was literally just talking about that with somebody the other day about how, like, when we were kids, we used to bug the shit out of our parents, especially if it was like a toy we wanted. Yeah, like the whole set, like you want to do. Like I remember Burger King had Dragon Ball Z um, action figures that came with theirs, and like I begged my grandfather like every day during the summer <laughs> to take me to fucking Burger King. He's like, "Don't ask for Burger King. <laughs> <laughs> we're not going to the Burger King today." Mine was the uh, golden Pokemon cards. Oh, yeah, yeah, for Burger King. I was begging. No, I, didn't those come from McDonald's? Mm-mm. I thought the same thing, but uh, uh, yeah. My stepmom just bought one for my son yeah, for Christmas. I was obsessed with those. I wanted all of them because the thing is, they were very random. You didn't know which one you were going to get. Yeah, they had so, like four different ones. Yeah, but one of them was like super rare. So you had to like, that's kind of the thing. You keep going and buying Happy Meals until you get the one that you want. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, I still have all the Mario Kart uh, McDonald's toys. Nice. Yeah, there's seven of them. I got them all. Oh, yeah. I got them all at the flea market, too. Some of those toys are worth a lot of money. No, I know. Like, most of the... I have a couple of the, like, Batman Returns ones from McDonald's. I have the... uh, Well, in the animated series, I got the Joker animated series. Nice. And I got the the Michael Keaton Batman from Batman Returns in his little uh, bat ski. Mm -hmm. I got him with his little head sticking out. I want to get the Danny DeVito... uh, mcdonald's one where he's in his penguin Mm -hmm. or he's in his rubber ducky with the with the thing on the front right umbrella yeah you remember those yeah i do but yeah i want to get that oh they're not really worth any money i had to look it up because i was so curious dude people it kills me like they'll keep them in the raggedy ass packages from like 1992 and and, like they're all shitty and like faded and like you can't even see the toy in them anymore yeah people are like it's not worth anything if you take it out of the bag i'm like bro it's a fucking mcdonald's toy like you may get two bucks for it if somebody's really nostalgic for it i shit you not they the the guy had the other day at the flea market had those muppet babies mcdonald's toys he had the whole set i give him that i was like how much do you want for the whole set dude and he was like i want 30 dollars." i was like you're fucking high (laughs) i said bro maybe because you have every one somebody will give you like 10 15 maybe if they just desperately want these things right these are going for like 25 a piece on ebay Yo, that's cars. what I was saying. He's like, well, on eBay. I'm like, bro, this is not fucking eBay. Yeah. This is well, the flea market. Well, I'm sure he's worried you're going to like buy them and like try and flip them. Well, I mean, if he's without worry, then he should fucking sell them on eBay. Yeah. I mean, why isn't he doing that? That doesn't make any sense. He's trying to sell them like. Because these people are fucking lazy as shit and yeah. they just want. To, it is a lot of work. You know what I'm saying? There's they, some things I want to sell and I'm just like, I don't want to deal with that. The sad part is, is that most of these people, um, they don't have real jobs. Like, this is what they do. Like, yeah, that's fair. Oh, they're probably, the, they go to, like, um, thrift stores, find this stuff, go or, to other uh, flea markets, I was or just about to say, yard sales. Or they'll get there because they're selling shit. They'll get there and they get, like, when other people are unpacking their shit, they'll go buy some of their shit and put it out and sell it for are twice as much. I swear to God. I saw stuff this week that I saw at other people's uh, tables last week that they had bought for 50 cent. And now they were selling for two dollars. Could you imagine if you like you saw them like buy out their whole stand just to add their stand to theirs and then like double the price on everything? People have done it to me. I, I like uh, like I had like I don't know probably about fifteen things left. Yeah, and I had only been out there a couple hours and it was getting hot and I was like, man, I'm about to just throw this shit away and go throw it away. <laughs> and the dude uh, for real, and the dude at the table next to me, he's like, hey man, he's like. He's like, uh, you trying to get out of here? I was like, yeah. He's like, you want me to buy you buy everything? I was like, if you want to, like, you don't feel like you have to, man. He's like, well, how much would you take for everything? I was like, I don't know, man. How much you want to give me? And he was like, how's five bucks? I was like, that'll fucking work, dude. And I took the five and he took it all. Holy shit. I went back the next week and he still had about half of it. <laughs> That's fucking hilarious. I didn't know they did that, but shit. 
and it also depends on what you have, you know. Oh well, yeah, he's not gonna buy a bunch of garbage. He he knew your stuff would sell. Some people will like they're they they know what they're doing because there used to be a guy that would go out there and he would just have clumps and clumps and boxes of shit. Like he would sell everything for fifty or a dollar in the mornings, mm-hmm. but you had to dig through everything to find it. Like, yeah. But then if you stayed around until the end, about 10, 30, 11, he didn't want to pack any of that shit back up. So he would say, fuck it. It's free. Take whatever you want. You know how many golf clubs, like fucking just toys and just random shit that I've gotten and given to people just because I'm like, I don't want it, but I know somebody that would like this. That's fucking funny. I wonder where he gets all this stuff from. Uh, He says he buys storage lockers. Oh, okay. He said he got into it before the whole storage wars craze, and yeah. he just like you know he's like I was buying lockers full of shit for like twenty bucks. That's crazy. I, I <sighs> we're supposed to be talking about Days of Thunder, and I'm fascinated at the fucking flea market hall thing, and I want to ask you a bunch of questions, but we need to talk about this <laughs> fucking movie, Nick. <laughs> I'm shitting you. I'm, 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 I'm one more thing. I'm shitting you not though. Like this dude, uh, he would have he had a fucking U-Haul that was decommissioned that he owned. Mm-hmm. That he would just load up with shit every weekend, different shit. Nothing ever came back. Because like I said, if he didn't sell it, he just threw it in a dumpster. Right. But yeah, anyways. So there's a big accident, and uh, they both get fucked up. Yeah. And that's where Nicole Kidman's character co- really comes into it. Right. She's the doctor. And uh, Tom- Youngest doctor ever. And Tom Cruise <laughs> has got like a wicked ass concussion, and he thinks that. Robert Duvall is fucking with him again. Yeah. So he takes Nicole Kidman's hand and puts it on his dick. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, I know what you could do with this. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, is he okay? Or is like that? He's like, yeah, he, no, no, no. She's like, He's clearly I, I'm, I'm experienced in other ways. And then walks away. Um, uh, The script was fun fact. The script was not finished. It They were working on the script as they were doing the movie. Tom Cruise actually had cue cards that he was reading for his lines. Oh, wow. Yeah. I did not know that. Yeah. But, uh. Well, he pulls it off. He had, apparently he had the cue cards, like, on his windshield, and it caused an accident. So then he had an earpiece where people would read his lines to him. <laughs> well, that's, I guess, smarter. Uh, it's a fucking cue card in an actual car, dude. Yeah, right. If you're going to actually drive it. I yeah. Don't know. It is pretty funny. They actually mounted, um, oh, cameras and shit right on the hood i was gonna say fun fact there's a documentary about the making of this movie that's on youtube um definitely check it out it's worth a watch you learn a lot of little that's where i'm getting most of my information from shit i might have to look at that it's only like 30 minutes long but it's really informative i think there was like a special edition that came well i know a special edition came out but it might have had that on there sounds like you like the documentary about the movie more than the actual i mean i did i actually enjoyed it (laughs) Because the thing is, is Tony Scott it was a great director. He, Like I said, he's one of my favorite directors. True he did romance, True baby. Romance, The Fan. Like, I can go on and on. I love all of his movies. Fuck that, man. I still love this movie. You ain't gonna, you ain't gonna turn me off this No, one. no, no. And that's what I'm saying. Some people, a lot of people really enjoy this movie. It's not made for me. All of, uh, all of our listeners and supporters that are NASCAR fans, make sure y'all let Greg have it for this. Because he's hating on the goat of NASCAR movies. I just don't care about that. I just don't care. And I didn't think the movie was that great. Like, it was good. Like, it it was okay. Before I forget, another great fucking scene in this movie that I like is after they get all get out of the hospital. and they're like, I know you wanted to talk about it. And they're trying to get back into Ray's dude because, you know, him and Michael Rooker, like, they're, it, it's thought it was kind of funny that they, like, put him in the same fucking hospital room. Yeah. Like, these guys are millionaires, but, like, they're still fucking in the same room. Mm-hmm. So, like, they're, you know, they don't like each other, but they're kind of you know, becoming friends a little bit like frenemies, you know? Yeah, 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 exactly. So they're supposed to go to like this big like banquet or dinner or something. And they're oh, like, Oh, I thought you were going to talk about the wheelchair scene. <laughs> oh no, that's a good one too though. They start racing the wheelchairs down the hall. Uh, yeah. They... yeah. <laughs> no, that, I'm that talking about the rental cars, man. Yeah. He's like, we're going to settle this shit once and for all. And Tom Cruise is like, how are we going to do that? And Michael Rooker points at the fucking rental car dealership. These dudes pull out both and like drop topless sabers <laughs> and just start fucking these cars up. <laughs> I mean, they're just fucking on the street like with in, in midday traffic, just boom, boom, beating their shit in. <laughs> Apparently they destroyed a lot of cars on set. Like, I would imagine. I, I don't even want to remember. I don't even remember what the number was. Like thirty five cars they went through. I believe it. Something like that. And it was only a fifty five million budget. Yeah, but shit, back in ninety one. Yeah, exactly. Uh, thirty years ago. Yeah, that'd be like a two hundred million dollar movie now. <laughs> Not that much, but probably closer to a hundred million. Yeah, it'd be a big budgeter. Yeah, right. 
But uh, and then they, I love it. They pull up to the dinner and they're like, give it the keys to the valet. The cars are like fucking falling <laughs> apart. I just, I like, that's like one of my favorite scenes. It's very Jim Carrey, the mask <laughs> scene. Yep. I got your ticket. It's not my car. <laughs> <laughs> um, I just don't know why I had to cut to liar, liar when he's like, this <laughs> scratch. <laughs> he does have a lot of problems with mechanics <laughs> and cars. That's fucking great. <laughs> I love Jim Carrey, man. Like, Go. 90s Jim Carrey, especially. Like, yeah. His best we do, uh, The wife and I went on a bender and just watched all of Jim Carrey movies. I haven't watched Liar, Liar in a while. I'm going to have to put that on. We're, we're entertaining the idea of bringing back couch potatoes. Oh, yeah? Yeah, because uh, since I'm back on, you know, day shift, mm-hmm. when I get off work, we kind of like, our time together is watching TV shows, and we have a new one, Sweet Tooth, just came out on Netflix, everyone's talking about it, so I figured we would watch it and maybe get together and talk about it. So sad Ozark's ending after this season. Don't talk about it. <laughs> Don't talk about it. I mean, I'm glad that it's coming to an end. I hate, like, Santa Clarita's diet, we've talked about this a million times, but them just leaving it on a cliff note. Right. My name is Earl Cliff Note. Like I want it to end, god damn it. But the difference between Ozark and the San Clarita Diet is Ozark is actually a good show. So they're gonna <laughs> Fuck they're gonna give our fans closure. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Um, I think they're doing it because they're worried it's gonna get cancelled. I, think, I so. think that's what I heard. Is they're worried it's gonna like get cancelled too early, so they wanna actually wrap it up. I feel like it's like a breaking bad type thing. It's like what else could we do to this fucking guy? I mean you could ki- that, you know see what I mean? they did with Breaking Bad? I know, but I'm just saying by the sixth season it you felt like man, this guy's gotta fucking die. Like yeah, I guess you're right. You know, he's cross that point of no return he's lost everything that he was looking for other than making sure his kids were taken care of i'm just excited to watch his wife reign this season dude he's gonna gonna be be, he's gonna be her bitch dude that's what i'm saying you know how this fucking ends is i think i think uh i think wendy ends up taking over the fucking cartel Mm. and marty's her accountant Mm. i think they're gonna get killed you think so I think they're going to, I don't think they're going to wheeze a lot of it. Ooh, either that or when he's going to get too big for it and they're going to make Marty fucking kill her. Yeah. That would be crazy. Like, oh my God. Could last you scene, she's standing there like doing the fucking dishes or something and Marty she gets just like, fucking chokes her out with a fucking like phone she's cord. like way too wrapped into it. He's trying mm-hmm. to get out and she's like getting deeper in. Oh my what, God. That's literally what she's doing though. And then he ru- has to run again. Fuck. That's pretty intense. No, I think he gets the okay from the cartel guy. Oh, yeah? He's like, look, I just want to do your fucking numbers and go on about my life. She's starting her own operation, like taking business from the cartel, and they're like, we'll let you out, but you got to take out your wife, and we'll let you go, free man. You and your kids, Marty, you and your kids can be free. Yeah. But Wendy can She's got to go. She can't go. Oh, my God. No, because that's how you do it. She starts working for the other fucking cartel. Because she thinks dirty. that's the way out. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. If if you can kill this cartel leader, I'll set you up for the next 10 years with all his business and shit like that. Right. Because you know she's a sneaky bitch. She could do it. Mm-hmm. The way she fucked over that senator on those casinos, dude, I love that. That was like my favorite part of last season. What if she catches on to Marty's plan, sees what he's about to do, she takes him out, and she becomes part of the cartel? Either way. <laughs> So many routes. Yeah, there's go. so many. That's why I'm so excited for it because there's so many ways it can go. And you know what? Uh, one out of the kind of left field a little bit, but I kind of thought could happen is uh, the son gets tired of it and turns them all fucking in. Mm, I don't know. He does seem kind of bitchy, but there was that scene where he was uh, killing animals that they never like yeah. tapped into. So they might tap into that a little bit or he's the fucking hit man. Take I that. just feel like he's getting uh, like when they killed the old dude, that's when he was like, that's when he lost his shit because yeah. he liked the old guy. Right. That was kind of like the only thing he had in that craziness. Mm-hmm. But I'm I'm really excited to see where it goes. Yeah, dude. me too. It's a good show. So pretty much the end of the movie is Tom Cruise finally wins the big one. <laughs> uh, we're not we're not stressed on time. I was just checking the time. No, I know, but like because I looked at the time and you like jumped to the end of the movie. <laughs> no, but it's just like well, I mean, after the after the like I said, they finally get back into the cars. Well, there's a lot more that goes into it that you're skipping over. So, um, and he gets Nicole Kidman. He uh, what's his name? Cole is uh yeah. He wants to get back into the race. The old man drops out. Yeah, Harry. Yeah, like, Harry drops out. 
but the other guy can't race anymore. Like he's too fucked up. Like That's he's right. having his a lot eyes. of issues. Yeah. yeah. He's like, it feels like my eyes are spring loaded and they're just going to pop out of my head. And then he has a tumor or a blood clot in his head and they want to drill it out, drain the blood. He's like, and he brings him in and he's like, would you do this? Like, do you think I should go through with it? He's like, yeah, I think you should. He's like, well, if I do, you have to drive my car. So he gives him okay to drive his car at the Daytona 500, and then he has to get the pit coach back. That's right. To coach him through, and that's when uh, he yeah, wins. Yeah, that's when he finally wins the race, and it was a cute moment. Well, because the whole time he's in the hospital, that's where him and uh, Nicole Kidman's relationship blossoms. I really hate that part of this movie. That whole relationship part, like you could take that out, and I wouldn't even notice. Kind of didn't like it well like i said he was banging her and he's like hey you know i gotta get this chick in this movie so <laughs> just like make the doctor the love interest well i think they had the love interest already written into it i just wish it wasn't there like it doesn't add anything it just this is saturated she's just sexy scenery man right but and that's what i was gonna say this is just saturated in 90s nostalgia because this is that's what you do you put a sexy love interest in you have this cheesy ass score you have this paint by numbers fucking script like in my head, the like when I want to picture Nicole Kidman, this is the movie I picture, and then she's smoking hot in this movie. Yeah, I think you hit the nail on the head for me as uh, Moulin Rouge. Yeah, she's good in that one. She also looks great in Eyes Wide Shut. She's sexy as shit in that one. I've only gotten halfway through that movie because it just makes me uncomfortable. If it was just her naked, <laughs> you know what I mean. Uh. So yeah, they uh they win the race and yeah, yay for them. I don't think there's ever been a Nicole Kidman movie that I'm just like in love with. Yeah, I'm, that, well, I'm, I'm trying to think. It kind of speaks. She's not like the most amazing actress, but she's a pretty decent actress. So she gets by on her looks. I feel like more than her talent. Yeah, I think so too. But she's always been a fucking a lister, though. You know what I'm saying? Like every like when she started making movies, she just like Demi Moore was just outshining all the women back in the day, though. That's because like Demi, Demi can was... actually fucking act. Oh, well, that's man. what I'm saying. She's acting all these women like out of Hollywood. Who would have thought out of a marriage between her and Bruce Willis that she was still the better actor? You yeah, know? right. Like, fuck that. I love Bruce. <laughs> Bruce Willie for life. Um, but yeah, I, like I said, man, um, I get this movie at eight. I love it. Eight? Damn, that's pretty high. You know, I fuck with Tony Scott, too. This is like my second favorite movie he's done. I fucking love Tony Scott. Nothing will ever beat True Romance, but... All right. This is I'm, my number two. It's probably like True Romance and The Fan. I fucking love The Fan. I like so The Fan. Much. Fans in my top five. Yeah. I'm probably forgetting three good Tony Scott movies. Like, because he did a lot of good ones. Oh, yeah. He was the GOAT. Like, he's in one the of 90, the late 80s, early 90s. Oh, dude. Didn't he do fucking. Uh, didn't he do Heat? Did he do Heat? I thought that I was. I feel like it was A. Scott. It may not have been him. <laughs> no, I don't think he did that. Michael um, Scott, maybe? No, not Michael Scott. Like, God, you're going to get us fucking... That's Ridley Scott. I'm thinking of... Oh, I see. Um, Domino, Unstoppable, True Romance, The Fan. I like get Domino. Get Santa. I've never seen Domino. I got it, man. I'll put it on your list. Hey, it's worth a watch. I didn't know he did Out of the Furnace. Psh, that fucking hurts my soul because that movie sucked balls. Did it? I haven't watched it. I fucking hated it, dude. That really? was the worst use of Christian Bale and Woody Harrelson I've ever fucking seen. In a What's movie. funny is I think Mick like really loves that movie. He'll I have think to he come. does. I think he does, dude. Yeah. The Good Wife, Killing Lincoln, The East, Stoker, Labyrinth. Not, not that labyrinth. We know it ain't fucking Pan's Labyrinth. <laughs> Guillermo's got to take that L for the life. Gray? Eh. Gettysburg. Oh my god, dude, that long ass movie. <laughs> uh Unstoppable. The yeah. Pillars of I something. didn't like I didn't hate Unstoppable, but I didn't think it was great either. The Pillars of Earth, the A Team. He did the A Team movie? I like the A Team movie. <laughs> did you ever watch it? It's stupid funny. Like uh, Liam Neeson. Like Rampage oh, Producer. Mr. These are all like producer movies, not directed. Ah, uh, okay. IMD fucking lied to me. But I know he did. I know he has directed a couple though. Oh, Deja Vu! I fucking love Deja. That's Vu. a good movie. That's a good movie. Yeah, Agent Orange, Man on Fire, which I fucking love. He de- he he directed Man on Fire. It looks like yeah. Oh well, fuck yeah, dude. The, I mean, Man on that's Fire my is my favorite fucking Tony Scott movie. Then oh, is it? It bumps True Romance, not by much, but a little bit. Uh, it is really great. That's like my favorite Denzel movie. Enemy and then of Training the, Day. Enemy of the State. 
Oh my god, that's a great fucking movie too. Um, Crimson Tide, he did. That's a good I've one. never seen that, but my dad fucking loves Crimson Tide. He's a always one. watched that shit, but I never watched it because I don't care about submarines. That's another one my dad's into too. Yeah. He loves that one and he loves the Hunt for Red October. My oh, dad nice. loves that fucking movie. Uh, the Last Boy Scout. I knew there was one I was missing, bro. Yeah. Never mind. I know my top five, bro. Days of Thunder, Revenge, Beverly Hills Cop Two. I like Beverly Hills Cop Two. Oh, he did Top Gun. Of course he did. Mm-hmm. Damn, this guy's a goat. That's what I'm saying. He's one of the best directors ever. So, R.I.P. R.I.P. But this is one of the ones that I'm just like, it wasn't made for me. That's what I just say. Like, if you love this movie, good for you. Have fun with it. It's not my cup of tea. I was just thinking about this movie on the way over here that, that I want to give you for my next one. <laughs> my next pick. Yeah. Uh, I know we got one before between that, but uh, I don't own it. So I'll have to see if I can find it or see if we can get it for free or if whatever. But it's called Fresh. It's Prince uh, of Bel-Air? No. This one is a, it's a, it's a, it's a brutal. It's kind of like City of God, but like the American version. Oh, I see. It's rough. Like, I remember when I saw this movie as a kid, it gave me fucking nightmares. Fresh. That some kid was actually living like this. Like, yeah. this was his life. Yeah, yeah, I haven't seen it. Yeah, it's about a kid in, like, the early 90s, New York. And he lives in, like, hell, pretty much. Um, This is going to be one of those movies. I'm excited to see it, because I like those kind of movies you give me. Um, This is one of those movies, talking about Days of Thunder, is I'm actually going to give it a recommended but if you like the type of movies that I like, it's not a recommended. Mm-hmm. But if you like Nick's kind of movies, this is probably like right up your alley. Look like, at that fucking cover, bro. <laughs> I want a shirt with that on there, dude. Like how hard is that right now? I had to I had to uh do this to digital. This to digital. Cause when I put this in my PlayStation, the aspect ratio got shrinked down. So it was black bars all around four corners. And really? the movie was like half the size of the screen of the TV. <laughs> Jesus, sorry, dude. I guess it's because it's so old. It's THX. Did you, did you buy it like as it came out, bro? That's from the flea market. <laughs> I was just blown away. That's I the tried. First time I ever saw Days of Thunder on DVD. You're welcome. <laughs> Could have got you a VHS, bro. I had to blow the dust off of it. <laughs> <laughs> this is actually the first DVD ever made. Right here. As as according to my fucking PlayStation, it is. So no, I just I don't know what happened. I put in other movies. And they worked fine, so this one was weird. I don't know why, but here you can have your. Thing. Hopefully it uh, hopefully it works on mine. Oh, I'm sure it will. It's just the aspect ratio got fucked up, but uh, so yeah, I give it a recommended. It's worth a watch. It's, it's also the widescreen it's version. Too. Fucking Tony Scott, like goat. But yes, man, these are these are for you, bro. Oh <laughs> God, that's terrible. <laughs> Thank you, I appreciate it. Yeah, I didn't have. Of course, I didn't have Celtic Pride. I'm glad you do I now. Do. I do now. Enjoy that <laughs> and Mystic River. Yeah, you oh, he's to, fucking... you're going to have to tell me. Yeah, yeah, I know you hate those. <laughs> I mean, who likes them? I mean, it was one of the worst inventions they ever came. The fucking snap covers. See, I feel like that's an old school DVD, oh, bro. Oh, uh, 100%. If it's snap cover, baby, that's that's Gen 1 DVD. <clears throat> yeah. I still got like 12 of those. <laughs> 20. I don't know, like a thousand. I know, right? A I bunch. think Sleepers is on snap cover, which I need to rebuy. By any given Sunday is on snap cover. My fucking... Uh, Last Boy Scout snap cover, dude. <laughs> well, mine is not. My last man standing is snap cover. <laughs> I've given you a lot of snap covers. Yeah, I'm thinking about that, it. Yeah. <laughs> Half my collection of snap covers. Oh, so since you gave me that Tom Cruise movie, I don't know what made this pop into my head, but Vanilla Sky. But right. back in the day, I used to love this fucking movie. I haven't seen it in like 15 years. Right. So um, I went ahead and watched it this morning. It's one of those movies that like when it came out, I heard nothing but like people, how much people fucking hated it. So yeah. I never watched it. But people that run in my circles fucking loved it. Right. Everyone was ra- raving about fucking Vanilla Sky. So the fun game that I want to do with this movie is I bought an edition that has the theatrical cut mm-hmm. and it has the alternate ending version. I watched the alternate ending. You should watch the theatrical cut, and we'll talk about both versions of the movie without seeing the other version. All right. I'm Sound down. like a good time? Yeah, I'm down. Yeah. Because, yeah, I watched the uh, the alternate ending. You should watch the alternate ending because you've seen the theatrical ending, so you know. But I don't going. remember it. When you're talking to me about it, I'm sure I'll start to remember it. But You think it's that different? 
I don't know. I don't remember. Like, it's been so long since I've seen this movie. Well, I guess we're going to find out together, folks. I just remember it was a trippy fucking movie and liking it a lot. So, uh, so I bought it. Can't believe you got it on fucking Blu ray. Yeah, I did. <laughs> yeah, I did kind of like a crazy haul. I guess I can go over my movies. So I got down like a little bit of a rabbit hole <laughs> this week. Hell yeah. Um, so I bought that one because I wanted to have it. Plus, I wanted to do it on the podcast. Um, way back in the day, I was dating this girl that was really into weird movies, but she was into like odd movies. So she introduced me to a lot of things. And there was this one director. He did Welcome to the Dollhouse, which it follows this girl going to school, but it's really uncomfortable. It's a really weird movie. I want to get it and rewatch it because I don't remember it. I just remember being uncomfortable throughout the whole thing. And they did another movie called Happiness, which is by far the most uncomfortable movie I've ever seen in my life. And I can't find it under $65. Damn. Because they don't print it anymore. But if I do find a copy, if you're out in the flea market and you see happiness, it's going to have a cartoon cover and it says happiness across the screen. Please buy it because they don't know what they have. (laughs) And I want it. I got you. I will pay you back. Happiness. Yeah. Just happiness. It just says happiness. I got you. It's a, uh, and so I was going on the director. I'm like, man, that guy made some movies that I really liked. Um, he did one called the dark horse. I've never seen this, but I know I like his movies and I like his style. Who is it? Um, I forgot the name of the director. I can never, I just know I liked the director. So I would look him up. I'm shit with names. I can't remember anybody's name. Right. So I bought this one to just check it out. I might put it on the podcast. I always have to screen these movies before, ever since Stalker. Yeah, thank God. <laughs> like I screened Cruising. Not only our fans, but I thank you. <laughs> yeah. So I screen these movies before I uh, before I suggest them to you. So I'm excited about this one. I just remember the only person that that I know that I that I interact with that listens to our podcast. The only person I knew was Victor. Mm-hmm. That. He was the only person that that said it was a great movie. I was just like, Vic, are we watching the same movie, bro? Like, <laughs> he's like me. He's into the same like art house movies. Dude, I know you're into the art house, but I was even watching it. Like, Greg cannot like this shit. Like, I actually really love that movie. That's just crazy, though. Like, I didn't find anything in that movie I liked. <clears throat> well, I'm sorry that you don't have good taste. No, I mean <laughs> most movies, bro. Like, I can find one thing. Even if it's one thing. Yeah. Stalker, nothing. No. Nah. No, I would. You said w- the beautiful scenery. Well, yeah, that's true. I did say that. <laughs> yeah, it's up there with nothing. Yeah. I know. <laughs> it's it's a tie between the two. It's close. Um, do you know who Mads Mickelston is? Yeah. He's the played the bad guy from uh, Doctor Strange. Yeah. And he did Hannibal, which I'm absolutely obsessed with. The, see, the show? The show Hannibal. Oh, okay. Um, so there's this movie, The Hunt. You haven't seen this, have you? Uh, Neither have I. I keep hearing people talking about it, and I'm just curious. Like, I want to see. What did you it's ever all watch about. his John Wick fucking movie on Netflix? John Everybody, Wick movie. It was kind of like this is what I can compare it to. It was like his John Wick movie. No, he played like a retired hitman who was just supposed to chill out in the fucking wilderness, and then he ends up having to kill everybody. It's no one word. It's like I forget what it's called, but dude, it was like a, everybody talked about how great the kills were and shit in it. But. Right? No, I have not. So that's the thing is, I love this actor, but I have not seen enough of his work. So I'm gonna go into watching a lot of his stuff, and I'm gonna start with this. And he also did a movie about like these teachers that are alcoholics that can't stop drinking <laughs> or something like that. And I want to check that one out too because I heard good things. So I just bought The Hunt. I'm gonna check it out. I'm excited. There's a movie called The Hunt that I know, but it's got Benicio Del Toro and Tommy Lee Jones in it. Yeah. Or no, that's sorry. That's The Hunted. <laughs> that was not bad, though. Yeah. Benicio Del Toro plays a, a like a veteran. He's so great. And uh, he's lost his shit. And he was like one of the baddest motherfucking like uh, for the army and shit. Like he could track anybody, he could fucking kill any, like, you know, like he was a guerrilla warfare type of dude. They just right. drop him off in hostile territory and just mm. be like, yo, come back alive. You don't. And well, he'd been out there too long and he lost his shit while well, he lived up in the mountains and like he started attacking hunters and shit that were like trying to kill animals. Oh yeah. They were supposed to. And there was only one guy that they knew they could track him down and it was the guy that taught him how to track, which is Tommy Lee Jones. He's got a sweet beard in it. <laughs> They have a fucking super cool, like, Indian, like, homemade knife fight at the end. It's, it's a pretty good movie. What's it called? It's 
called The Hunted. I think I own it. Yeah, well, put it on the list. I'll, I'll, I'll put it, it on there. I'm going to write it. Yeah, yeah I was yeah. going to say, you you made a little list for yourself. I did make a list. I did. <laughs> I'll let you put that on there. I'm getting better. Yeah. I'm going to see what I got on here so far. Greg's movies. <laughs> we got Volunteer, 15 Minutes, Mystery Men, and now... I'm going to put fresh on there too while it's in my head. Yeah. And you have like your shelf is I'm, I'm getting a second shelf because you have so many movies that you haven't watched, but I can't stop buying them. Right. Cause I buy them quicker than we could do this podcast. What did I just fucking, what did I just the hunters or the, something? The hunted. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Um, you need to, we need to map out a day that you can come over again and we can go through shit. Cause you got to remember I bought fucking, hundred movies between now and then too. Right. So. Next time, maybe we could do the podcast at your house. And then when we're done, I could just go through your movies. Yeah, that's cool. I'll actually go through them this time because last time it was like a, I don't want you to think that I don't want you to like come to do it at my house. But like, I just feel bad because like we have a fucking dog and we have fucking kids. And, yeah, I get it. You know what I'm saying? And no, I don't I know. want it to sound like shit. It's more so like if you, uh, like can't get away. Right. It's like, no, we I need got, to do it. Yeah. I know. Um, you know, but I always try to make it, it's like, you know, I always try to make it as easy for you as you can. I appreciate it. So the last thing that I got finally came in the mail. I've been waiting for this forever. What's up? My Parasite steel, steel book. book. Dude, did you get two steel books? No, why? Oh, no, because you gave me the Blu-ray. I gave you the Blu-ray because right. I because you had it at your house because we watched Parasite. And then I was looking up special editions of Parasite and I came across this motherfucker. There is a black and white edition Blu-ray in here of Parasite. The same movie, but it's just the same and white. movie, black, kind of like a black and chrome. Right. Um. So yeah, I bought this one, but I have full intentions of never opening this. I am just gonna hold on to this. It's gonna be my collector's movie because I want to see. Um. They had another steel book. It's of each family walking up and down the stairs, but it, they're like contrasted to each other. It's going for over a hundred dollars, Nick. For a fucking steel book? Yeah, for a steel book. So I'm hoping this one will follow the same trend. And years down the road, people... I, just, I feel guilty now because I've literally paid $2 for two steel books. <laughs> like, <laughs> I feel like I almost didn't tell you. Just because, like, I was super excited to tell you I got these steel books. And I was like, the only thing that'll save it is he doesn't give a shit about either of these yeah, movies. The thing, like, yeah, the thing is, is, like, you're buying... You're finding things for, like, really cheap, and I'm just overpaying for shit. I think I paid $35 for this, which is a lot. Come with me. No. <laughs> come with me. I know. Now that I'm on days, I can if I'm off on oh, that's Sunday. that's true. That's true. So, yeah. yeah. Just give me a holler, and we can... I'll ride out there with you. Yeah, I was just saying I work this weekend, but next weekend, you know I'm gonna be out there. Well, maybe. I, I think I have Sunday off, but it's, uh... Fourth of July. That's what I was thinking. Yeah, yeah. some. But uh, but yeah, that's my little movie haul. I'm excited about it. Nah, that's cool. You got some good ones. Oh yeah, I'm excited about the parasite one. It's it's a shame I'm not opening it because it would be interesting to watch that, it. That's a black and white. That's what's crazy. I can't believe that you're not right. Um, have you watched anything lately that you want to talk about? Uh, TV or movies, any of that? Any of that. Anything you excited about? Because I've been going back and watching like old classic movies that I've never seen. So I, uh, I wanted to, uh, I'm actually really excited to take my son to see the, that second boss baby. Cause Are you? I like the first one, man. I mean, it was like amusing, but I didn't love it. It's kind of like, ah, uh, yeah, okay. I like the first one and I like the, uh, I like Alec Baldwin. Like, I'm yeah, big, that's all. He's the only guy. reason I, I like watched it is because I thought he was pretty funny. I bought four out of six or four out of five seasons of Boardwalk Empire. Um, I bought season four of Parks and Rec. Got all these for a dollar a piece. That's why I got them. Nice. I bought my wife the first three seasons of Sex and the City. Yeah. They all match. They look cool as shit. People fucking love that show. Dude, my wife is a... I have, I've got her both the movies and she has three. I have to give her the other three seasons. Um... What else did I buy? Oh, dude, your boy fucking Rogan, dude. I bought News Radio the last season. Oh, my God. I got that shit. You know what's funny? I remember watching it and because I liked, uh, what's his name? Andy Dick. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's like the only thing I could stand to watch him in, yeah, honestly. Yeah, exactly. And I remember liking it, but I can't remember the show for the life of me. And I've actually kind of been wanting to rewatch it. But at the same time, 
I realized I had uh, he had Elon Musk on recently, mm. and it made me realize I only listen to Joe Rogan for his guest. I don't necessarily like him. Like he's a pretty good interviewer, but right. I just I think his interviews are great. You know what I mean? Like I think I definitely like the ones where he's got people that I enjoy on with him. But uh I I don't know, I enjoy listening to him. No, no, no. He's very I'm... knowledgeable and shit, but like I can't go like I used like I used to probably watch about four or five Joe Rogan clips a day. I... Now I'm down to like maybe one a week. I used to watch listen to every episode that he did, no matter who it was, but now I'm like selective. Like, do I want to hear him talk about this today? Because he's getting to that uh Adam Carolla where he's like repeating himself and yeah. he's kind of telling the same stories over and over and it's kinda of like mm. Yeah, that's true. That's why I had to stop listening to Adam Carolla because he was just t- telling the same stories like over and over. And I'm like, Adam, I don't give a fuck. <laughs> you know who I hear people like can't get enough of podcasting wise? Who's Norm McDonald. Norm McDonald. I haven't listened to him. No. Like people love fucking Norm McDonald. Like mm-hmm. people in like, some circles, they'll tell you that Norm McDonald is the go to comedy. And I mean, I, I've watched Norm McDonald stand up, you know, th- throughout my life. Yeah. I've never really thought it's great. Like, yeah, I, actually, I liked him better in his movies, his shitty movies. I liked like Dirty Work. Like it's a terrible fucking movie, but right. I, I loved it for some reason. Yeah, him and Artie Lange are just fucking disgusting as fuck through that whole movie. <laughs> you actually just made reminded me of a movie my wife and I watched recently. Um, but yeah, like I I watched his stand up once, and I was like, it was okay. I didn't love it. But one of my friends was like, how the fuck do you not like more Norm Macdonald? Like they were in love with him. They're like, he's probably the funniest man alive. So I liked the Norm Macdonald show for the whole four episodes they had on TV. Yeah. Uh, that movie screwed with him, Danny DeVito and Dave Chappelle. Mm-hmm. I, I like that. I don't love it, but I like it. Uh, I, I like him and Billy Madison playing the drunk friend that don't <laughs> do shit. just lays around all day. Like he's funny. He does. He, like he's got his bits, but like some people just love Norm Macdonald, man. Yeah, they really do. I guess everyone has their taste. Everybody, I, I might think. have to go back and like rewatch his stand up. He was good on SNL too when he did the weekend update. Mm-hmm. He was like one of my favorite weekend update guys. I see. Uh, him and Chevy. Um, before I talk about the movie that I'm about to talk about, we the wife and I came across this one movie called uh, "It's a Disaster." Have you heard of this? I think I have, but I haven't. David seen it. Cross. I've heard of it, but yeah, but I haven't seen it. Dude, it's a fucking weird movie. Yeah. You know the movie uh This is the End? Yeah. This is like the light version of that. Okay. These these like three couples are trapped in a house. Like there's a chemical warfare going on outside and they're just kind of like dealing with it and their own problems. It's really strange. So they're like fine as long as they don't go outside. Yeah, or... yeah, yeah. They they duct taped the window shut so ah. it couldn't get in. But they're like dealing with their like relationship issues, but also dealing with the shit that's going on outside. It's a super awkward comedy. Hmm. I don't know. I might give it to you one day. I might yeah. get it because that'd be an interesting watch. Yeah, you know, it's a very like I like David. It Cross. came out the same year as This Is the End. That's probably why we never heard of it, right? And I love This Is the End. That shit's great. Yeah, it just doesn't have the star power or the like budget because it takes place in one house and that's right. it. I ain't gonna lie, uh, the last time I watched This is the End, like, I realized that now I really only like watching it up until shit goes left. Mm-hmm. Like, the party scene, like, if they would have made that whole movie just about that party, yeah, I would have been game. Because what's funny is mine, so many great cameos. Mine is when uh, Danny, Danny McBride gets introduced, and oh, yeah, the, that's the, good too. whenever he's yeah. deal, they're dealing with him. That's my favorite. Part. Oh yeah, yeah, because I like that part too, where the fucking ground, and then Paul Rudd squishes the old bitch's head and shit. Yeah, there's there's some good shit too. <laughs> my uh, magazine was stuck together, Danny. He's like, well, when I come, I don't know where it's gonna go, and sometimes it gets on the pages. Well, stop fucking jerking off all the. <laughs> I'll jerk. I'll come on every day. Sock or something, McBride. <laughs> I'm sorry, hate. I was raised in a house of women. I doubt they told you to come wherever the fuck you wanted. I'll come on everything. I'll come on that statue. I'll come on you. Uh, that's my favorite episode. Don't you fucking come on me. <laughs> 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 Danny, come back. I can't. I can't, Seth. I've already started walking away. 
That shit is fucking gold, dude. My the wife hates Danny McBride with a passion. She's dude, like he is the creepiest, most annoying guy I've ever seen in my life. I ain't gonna lie, man. Danny McBride for president. Yeah, like, I 100%. fucking dude. Eastbound and Down is like one of my favorite fucking shows. Thank ever. you. I love Eastbound and Down, man. That shit is. If too you funny. haven't watched it, please check it out. It's so fucking funny. And fucking Kenny Powers, man. The best there is. <laughs> <laughs> Throwing fucking heat. Oh, dude, he's great in that show. The fucking mullet, everything. One hundred percent, everything is perfect. Great fucking, great fucking show. They so, should make a movie out of that. Dude. Oh, I don't know why they haven't yet. Yeah, I mean, honestly, well, dude, you know what? I did not know this, but he's the guy behind these last two fucking Halloween movies. Really? Yeah, he wrote them, and I think he, I think he's either directed or wrote or whatever, some both, maybe. I don't know. That's that's interesting. I wouldn't have expected that. I didn't either, man. But he, yeah, he made a big fucking deal out of People it. People fucking love Halloween. That's so crazy about him, though, man. Because like when he first got started out, like he didn't really want to act. Really, like, when I didn't he was know that. in when he was in uh, when he was in Super Bad, he was just literally hanging out with those guys, and they were like, "Bro, do you want to be in this fucking party scene in the back?" And like now that they showed it to me on YouTube, like now when I watch Super Bad, I can't unsee him back there, because you don't know who the fuck he is. Like he hasn't he hasn't been in shit except for like you know like Bubble Boy or not was it Bubble Boy? You whatever said... the whatever the one he's sitting in the fucking chair, and uh, he kicks the dudes out, or maybe it's Identity Thief. I don't know. But there's a movie where he plays a guy in a wheelchair and he's like a super dick. It's like an Am Scott. He's like an Am Scott employee. Mm-hmm. Try to go to Sizzler. You know what I mean? <laughs> Is this one of your Nick fun facts? Because I don't see any ties between him and the Halloween franchise. I'm, the new I'm Halloween. telling you, bro. I'm telling you. The Halloween. Look up Halloween Kills. Yeah, I did. And his name's nowhere near it. Really? You're talking I, about Danny McBride, right? I'm, I swear, dude. Like, how would I have made that up? Because like, <laughs> you're crazy like that. Yeah, I guess We so. need to bring back, like, a Nick fun facts. Is it a fun fact or is it just me making his shit up? That's uh, what a Nick fun fact is, is you making shit up. <laughs> I uh cuz the director and I, and writers are Jimmy Champagne and Colonel and Gordon. I could have swore they said Danny McBride. I don't see his name anywhere around this and that's fucking that's funny. Maybe he's like an executive fucking producer or something. Maybe probably. Dude, I'm telling you, I'm not crazy. I, when I find it, I'm gonna send it to you. <laughs> It'll come across. Uh, I guess I'm, you. I guess I could have typed in Danny McBride and Halloween, and it probably would have brought something up. Well, you know my, uh, you know our phone is like, uh, you know your phone's here is talk, so you know it's gonna pull it up eventually. Okay, okay, you're right, you're right. I'm sorry. Danny McBride, co-writer on the upcoming Halloween Kills, confirms that the sequel will take place the same night of 2018's Halloween. Boom. So you're right. I just Boom. IMDb didn't have anything, so I'm sorry. You've been talking shit about him lately, so that makes sense. <laughs> I wonder why he's not doesn't have a uh, writing credit on IMDb. That's weird. But yeah, he co-wrote it. Interesting. I might have to check them out because I heard people said they were pretty good. Yeah, everybody said that Jamie Lee Curtis came come back, kind of gave it some weight. Like, oh yeah, people. Some people feel like it, the ones that she's not in aren't real Halloween movies. Yeah, and plus, I'm not a huge fan of the Rob Zombies take on things well dude the one with buster rhymes they fucking killed her off Mm -hmm. like she was only in it for like five minutes it was like she was like i don't do this shit anymore yeah so just take me out but then she realized like her whole career is based on this so she came back i don't know if you would have told me that though like because dude she's another one that like she's in so many good movies yeah i know i'm just i fucking love true lies it's like my favorite movie (laughs) with her in it can't get that hotel room scene out of my head i think i became a man that day when i watched that scene (laughs) <laughs> Never wanted to be a bedpost so bad in my life. You know what I'm saying? Right. She was really fucking top sexy in that movie. Like right. she was working out every day back then. <laughs> um. So this movie that I'm about to talk about, we can do it on the podcast, mm. or I can do a. We can just talk about it now. Bram Stoker's Dracula. Stoker's Dracula. That's the one with Gary Oldman. Yeah. Have you seen it? Fucking forever ago. Yeah. I just watched it the other day. I just remember his fucking uh, wig. 
how his hair he had like the the, the, the little the little buns yeah, yeah yeah i remember that um we were talking about keanu the other day and about like how shitty good actor is and this just like kind of cemented it the mm. truth in it <laughs> he's not good in this movie at all Governor. dude mick was like mick had like a field day with that shit the first time he came on i remember he kept talking about how bad his british accents were yeah 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 so he's, he's not good in that one uh Thanks to Red Letter Media, because they talk about random movies, and they talked about Dracula, and I'm like, well, now I want to watch it now. Right. Because they're like, it's not a good movie, but it's fun. I bought The Mummy, the new one, with Tom Cruise. Oh my god, why? Because it's got Russell Crowe playing Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. Yeah, I guess, but that fucking dark... What was it? It's the Dark Universe. Dark Universe did not take off. They tried, but they tried. you know they they put Tom Cruise. They in might some... want to try to get like good writers on those projects instead of just hiring anybody. Oh, it was a fucking big budgeter. Yeah, but it didn't work. I just don't think unless it's Mission Impossible, bro. Like people just don't want to see Tom Cruise no more. Same. The wife is like, I don't think I've ever seen a movie with Tom Cruise that I wanted to see. It's kind of like the Tom Cruise movie nobody asked for. Yeah, this summer. Top Gun 2. Yeah, exactly. We're bringing Goose back from the dead. No, it's going to be his fucking son played by Miles Teller. <laughs> fucking weak, bro. Did you uh, watch it, though, The Mummy? Uh, no, I haven't yet. Oh, I haven't seen it either. Yeah. I heard it was bad, but... That's what I heard. That's why, but I was I got it for a quarter. So, <laughs> yeah. you know, why not? You're like me. You're just going to run out of room. Eventually. Oh, I'm out of room, dude. Like now that now <laughs> That's, I got, that time has passed. <laughs> now I got stacks on the floor. The wife's getting pissed. I gotta get that shelf built. But wood went up a lot. I got like a little board out there that can you have. You're Thanks. welcome to. I don't know what that could all do, but it'll put like twelve movies on. Yeah. I appreciate you. Hey, it's a step in the right direction. Yeah, You'll save a little bit of money. It's better than nothing, right? Yeah. It'll um, save about fifty bucks. Yeah, that's what I want to do. I want to turn that whole wall into my movie show. Yeah, I, t- I was telling her that I want to do that in the living room. Like, the way that shelf is, I want to, like, incorporate it into the rest of the wall. I also bought season eight of the original Ninja Turtles, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Fuck yeah. I have four out of the ten seasons of that now. I'm going to get it. <laughs> You're going to work at it. I'm going to get them all. A little bit at a time. The cartoon, right? Oh, yeah, of yeah. course. Oh, I have all three of the movies, too. <laughs> On Blu-ray. <laughs> First two are amazing. Third one's dog shit. Yeah, I like the samurai shit though. Even though the plot's terrible, it, like, it has moments of like. Shiny yeah, moments. going back and watching it as an adult, it's like holy fuck, this is bad. But like, yeah, but the ooh, I still enjoy the the first two. You yeah, know? definitely. Which is funny because they both have different tones. Oh yeah, because like, the, the second one's, like, one dark gritty, and the second one's like slapsticky. Well, I didn't know this, but I watched one of those uh, seven things you may not know about the Ninja Turtles movies, yeah. and that was a big one. Is uh. Whoever, I forget, I think it was New Line or whoever it was that made those, they got such bad backlash from parents saying that they didn't like the weapons. So if you'll notice in the second um, Ninja Turtles movie, Leonardo never uses his swords. <laughs> they never even come out of the sheaths. Wow. The I, I haven't I haven't seen that in so long, but that's pretty funny. Yeah, that's why they made, uh, that's why like all their fight scenes were just like hand-to-hand combat, like... You see, Mikey. yeah, because they do fucking hand fight these fucking creatures for no reason. I'm like, why don't you use your fucking weapons? Yeah, you see, Mikey uses his nunchucks, and you see, Raph, you don't even see Raph uses sides, really. Right, you just see the uh, the or what he arm. does, he flips them and punches people with them. He doesn't stab anybody or anything, which I guess. Even if you watch the first one, it doesn't. It's not like it shows them cutting people open and yeah, shit. Right. Like it, the tone of it was way different, though. It was very dark and. Let me ask you this. If they made an R-rated Ninja Turtles movie and like not it doesn't have to be like Zack Snyder, obviously, but like a director like that, like Eli Roth's doing it. Like, so, you know, it's going to be fucking hardcore. I want you s- still be interested in seeing that. I want to see David Fincher make a Ninja Turtle movie. Like, would you see like they shell crush somebody yeah. like a fucking bank robber? They just fucking two of them jump and just crush him like. I, mean, I don't know, man. That I'd be fuck, all into it. I think I would like it, but at the same time, I'd be like, man, this is weird. Like, <laughs> I don't know how I feel right now. Aren't, weren't the comics super brutal? Um, the or one I- that the one they're doing right now, the last Ronin, it's about one of the four is all that's left. They've killed the other three, mm-hmm. and he has all their weapons. But like, I'm waiting for the whole thing to finish so I can buy the whole, I can buy the whole series, right? Because there's six issues. 
and like I want to read it, but I want to read it all at once. Yeah. So because I don't even I don't even know who the last one is because it doesn't say in any of the covers because he's wearing a he's wearing a mask, but it's like. It kind of looks like it could be any one of them. It's like in black and white. It looks super fucking cool, though. <laughs> like, but so that one I hear is a dark book, but yeah. Well, I remember back in the day, I might be thinking of another one, but I remember it being like super dark and gritty and violent. And then when they translated it to like cartoons, they had to like tone that shit down by a lot. I mean, be, I thought that I didn't think the comics, and I mean, I didn't think the comics came out till after the show. In America. Oh, no. The comics came out before the show. I know that for sure. Oh, they did? Yeah. Okay. Well, maybe. I don't know. I never really read any of the comics, but I love the fucking card. That was my first love in life, period, was the Ninja Turtles. Yes, same. I had all the toys. I had all the toys. Uh, we talked about it before, the flip yeah. ones. <laughs> I've tried. I've. That's literally like my favorite thing when I find out in the wild is a Ninja Turtle toy. I lose my shit. I'm right there with you. The van. Fuck. Dude, when I bought that party wagon, I fucking almost kissed that old lady right on the <laughs> mouth, dude. <laughs> And it's missing shit. I didn't care. I was so fucking happy. Right. I took my I took it home and showed my kids. I'm like, you know what this is? Do you know what this is? They don't care at all because they don't have the same nostalgia. It's like an old van. Don't dude. understand. What's funny about those toys is they're always so fucking nasty because kids play with them. Like it's a peanut butter jelly half like halfway shoved in the fucking car. Well, I uh, that's what I do with all that shit. I spend the first twenty minutes when I get back home. Wiping everything down. Oh, really? Yeah, I use antibacterial wipes on everything. Oh, yeah? Even the DVD covers. I give everything a wipe down. Is that a COVID thing, or is that, like, something you've always I did done? that even before COVID. Oh, I see. It's just because, like, you don't know where shit's been. This is very true. I, I remember you you gave me one movie. I can't remember what it was, but it looked like somebody used it as a fucking coaster because there was just the fucking ring on it. I was like, what the fuck? Yeah, this uh, the the straight out of Compton. I'm going to give you. It looks like somebody spilled queso or chili on it or something. What? what is happening with these movies? Like, I don't have movies that are super fucked up. Actually, I take that back. I do. My The Office is chewed up because the dog I had at the time yeah. was a puppy. I think everybody's got one DVD like that. And he pulled all my. For some reason, he didn't like The Office and decided to chew all the corners off. He was probably thinking like, "Wow, this is the most overrated show ever made." <laughs> So I got to get this out of here. <laughs> but other my other DVDs, like, they're pretty pristine. I tried to take good care of them and stuff like that. They actually have, like, um, like a screen, not a protectors that you can put them on now. Oh, really? I guess plastic protectors that go over your DVDs and Blu-rays that you can buy, which That's I'm cool. thinking about getting in, too. But maybe that's just more money that I'm spending. Yeah, but I do want you to come out there with me, bro, because I have been getting some fucking killer deals on movies lately. Well, like I said, I'm off Sunday, but it's the 4th of July. I'm sure you got shit going on, and well, they're I mean, probably not going to be out there. <laughs> oh, yeah, they will. <laughs> bro, I remember Christmas was on a Sunday a couple of years ago, and people were out there. You were out there? Yeah. <laughs> oh, once I opened the presents and everybody's ate breakfast and shit, we don't That's do That's true. Anything. After like 9 o'clock, there's nothing to do on Christmas. Well... We do because my mom's birthday is on Christmas. So oh. what we do is we get up, do presents with the kids, and then we'll go. We'll go over to my mom's, and my wife and her will make breakfast. I see. And then we'll open gifts over there. And then usually my stepdad will go to work or go to bed, and then uh, we'll just kind of lay around, be lazy for the rest of the day. Yeah, we uh we split the holidays between our parents. Like we usually go to my parents first, do the gift giving, go to her parents, gift giving. Right. Uh, well you go see my dad on christmas eve and then yeah. usually on like christmas night me and my dad will go see a movie or something oh really yeah that was like we did it like every year for the longest and then uh we tried to going it's probably about three or four years ago we tried going and there somebody got into like a big ass fight at that new movie theater mm -hmm. and the cops shut it down they wouldn't let anybody get tickets fucking bullshit it was like eight o'clock on christmas Why are you guys ruining this for me <laughs> there's a bunch of kids but. Um, but yeah, Sunday, if you want, I'm down. Cause she's going, the wife is going to her grandparents and I don't want to go. Well, no, that's what I was going to tell you. I work, but if you want, if you can go out there and I can meet you on my lunch break, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But it's later in the day. So that's about it. You know, right. This is when I'm not at work, you know, I'm out there with the sun. That's what I was going to say. Yeah. I'll but, check it out. Just let me know. But I'm off the Sunday after that. So. I don't know what my schedule looks like. I got a new schedule, so I got to check it out. I just know I got to work five days after this. Right. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. 
I only got one off in the next fucking seven, bro. Yeah. Schedules fucking suck. Not that these people care about that, but so no, next no. week is Vanilla Sky, right? <laughs> next week is Vanilla Sky with Tom Cruise. I was making fun of it. That's the actual fucking name, dude. Yeah. Yeah. I'm excited. Cameron what? Diaz at her prime. Oh, I forgot she's in that. Yep. And Penelope, too. Yep. Well, we'll see what happens. <laughs> All right. Next time. Later. Later.